Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch and welcome to the first unboxing style review on the channel of a brand I have had one eye on for years, literally years. The brand is of course Bertucci. Bertucci have been making watches since 2004, so almost two decades now. There's a nice timeline of their models they have produced on their website. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. Their shtick is that they are the ultimate field watches and worn by people who want durability, who want reliability, who want a no-nonsense product that just does what it's supposed to do. I particularly love this graphic. It shows just how much their A2 field watch has changed over the years. I think the brand logo has changed far more than the watch design, put it that way. This rather suggests that they got it right though in the first place, doesn't it? Now, I did not just buy one of these. It is kindly on loan from a subscriber up in Queensland called John. He bought his Bertucci from Mark at Long Island Watches, got it shipped to him, and then got it shipped down to me. Now, he lives in a place called St. George, Queensland, and I think he might have a connection to the tourist board there because he sent me all of this information about visiting St. George and he also sent me the single best stubby holder I have ever seen. It's a pair of jeans with a belt and a back pocket. That is epic. Cheers, John. Now he told me he has a pretty rough job that has seen him destroy a bunch of watches over the years. For example, an SKX lasted two whole years, but a Turtle recently only lasted six months before he killed it. John, I guess, therefore, is exactly the type of person that Bertucci hopes buy their watches. What did he buy? Well, he bought the most recent version of their A2 Classic in titanium with a number of upgrades. Let's flip the camera and peel off some stickers. All right, let's get into it. I'm not expecting any great surprises when I open the box today. I think Bertucci sets out their stall quite clearly as to what I can expect and what John can expect when it ends up back in his possession up in Queensland. That being lightweight, legible, reliable, and comfortable utilitarian field watch. Let's open the packet. Yeah, I mean, there was virtually no weight to the big box and there's virtually no weight to this one either. Durability by design, again, just kind of underlining. Enzo is apparently Enzo Bertucci, the man who started the company. Now, the reason that John bought this one from Market Long Island is apparently Market Long Island has a relationship with Enzo Bertucci. Three year warranty, okay, all right, that's, again, let's, Hope it lasts three years, it'll last longer than John's previous watches. I asked him what he did for a living. He told me he was an industrial, or he is an industrial electrician. So a lot of it's bangs and knocks, but a lot of it is magnetism as well. And from his experience of running many, many watches over the years, he reckons that ETA movements can be demagnetized, but Seiko movements are never the same afterwards. I'm surprised he hasn't opted for a quartz years earlier, to be honest it would seem a more sensible option. And there is what looks like being a very sensible option for him, the Bertucci A2T. All right, we've got one of these little Casio style plastic stands with Bertucci on it though. A polite reminder to please screw down the crown and the model name A2 Super Classic and Sapphire Crystal. I've never seen spec sheet in sticker form stuck to a piece of plastic. There's another one, 10 year lithium battery. Yeah, a very sensible option this one, I think. Tiny little bit of origami here, owner's manual. I'm not gonna open it, I don't think John will either. God, they're ticking all the boxes though, aren't they? Active comfort fit, telling you how to slide the one piece nylon back and forth for a good fit, and it will break in over two weeks, apparently. Hang on, hang on, <laughs> not finished yet. Super durable titanium Japanese movement, screw down crown, 200 meters, 10 years, three year warranty, everything we've just discussed, again, plus super luminous. Yeah, okay, thanks, Bertucci, we get it now. I've had a good look. This is the last one. Hang tag with price tag, 200 US dollars. Now, one thing I did note, and you can see pretty obviously here, it comes with one of those little quartz battery protector tabs. However, it is ticking. Now, it does have a 10-year lithium battery. I presume it won't have been ticking away for more than a couple of months after leaving the factory, heading off to Long Island, and then heading up to St. George, and then down here. But yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened there. Maybe it's not quite as thick as it should be. Let's remove that then, and let us peel off this dial sticker and have a good look at this thing. There we go. Needs a bit of a clean up. All right, that's it cleaned up, and I thought I would set it to the watch reviewer's favorite time of five past 10. 
and the fourth of the month because it does have a four o'clock date. Now it's quartz. First thing you do with the quartz watch is check whether the second hand hits the markers and this one doesn't hit the markers at all. Now personally, I just don't care about that. I've said that before a number of times. With an economically viable watch like this, shall we say, I, I'm not that bothered. With premium quartz, it would bother me. I know some people it does their nut in. I don't imagine that John is one of those. Yeah, this watch has other things on its mind than hitting those markers. Now, in terms of dimensions, this one is 40 mil in diameter, 10.7 mil thick. And one thing I noted with interest and with pleasure is that the sapphire crystal is recessed. It has a raised bezel, just like on a G-Shock, so you're less likely to whack, scratch, and ultimately smash that sapphire crystal. So 10.7 thick, fairly long 49 lug to lug, and 22 millimeter lug width. Now, more normally, it would be a 4020, but with this style of watch, you want a wider lug width because then it's gonna sit more comfortably, more stably on wrist. On the supplied one piece nylon Zulu style strap, it weighs in at 63 grams, just the head of the watch, 42 grams. So you could definitely cut it down to mid fifties with a lighter strap and as advertised on the dial, 200 meters of water resistance. In fact, this one has rather a lot of specifications advertised on the dial, 200 meters of water resistance, titanium, it's advertising that 10 year lithium battery and the fact that it has sapphire crystal as well. Grade two titanium, case crown and case back. Now, Bertucci's have a unibody construction, that's what they call it. So the bezel is part of the case and those spring bars are also part of the case as well. So case back is obviously screw on and separate, but that is one piece of metal. That is fantastic. Now it is a kind of satinized, finish, you know, it doesn't look particularly dull gray titanium. It's got a little more kind of champagne bronze color to it, but yeah, definitely not stainless steel, this one. Screw down crown, 200 meters of water resistance, yeah, reasonably knurled, nice and guarded down there at the four o'clock, and it has that Bertucci logo on it. One more sticker for us to peel, and yeah, they love their specs, the Bertucci's, don't they? Let's peel this one off and then have a look at it. And there you go, solid titanium, US patent, Japanese movement, Swiss luminous, CR, what is that? A 2012 battery, 200 meters water resistant, and yeah, lots of other information there, and a small picture of a dog, no idea why. You'd expect a no-nonsense watch to have a no-nonsense strap, and this one does. One piece Zulu style, very, very solid construction, this one, beautiful stitching there. Now, I imagine those are stainless steel, they don't quite match. They've matched the finish, but not the color of the case and case back. So yeah, I would imagine they're stainless steel. It is etched with Bertucci there, which is a nice touch. And there are a couple of little stitched portions down the bottom end. I guess that's to help the whole thing hang together once it's on wrist. I can definitely see this one taking a couple of weeks to wear in though, but I can definitely see it lasting for a fair length of time thereafter. And that's it on wrist, fits nicely on me. I must say it feels very snug, very comfortable because of the extra width of that fairly robust one piece nylon. Yeah, 63 grams, I am right into titanium watches at the moment. This is gonna be one of these things that once that nylon strap does wear in, you barely notice that this one is on your wrist. So you can get on with your job of stripping and reassembling industrial motors or whatever it is that you do. All right, let's have a quick look at the dial on hands under macro, blacker than black dial, whiter than white indices and hands. Everything's just printed, but it does look neat and tidy. Classic field watch patterning, so one to 12 in large numerals around the outer edge, 13 to 24 just inside of that, minute markers around the very outer edge and little circular dots with loom on the hour slash five minutes. Simple white fence post hands, nice red second hand, that's a nice touch, as is the Bertucci logo on the counterbalance. There's a printed frame around the date complication at the four o'clock. Not exactly a color matched date wheel if you see what I mean, but it is nice and legible. Personally, I could have done without the titanium, 200 meters lithium and sapphire. I think that clutters the dial somewhat unnecessarily, but hey, that's just me. I always go for a less is more attitude with the dial myself. And there is some loom on the hands, and on those indices, those circular markers around the very outer edge. I assume it's C3 Superluminova because it is advertised in several different places as being Swiss. You know, it's not a diver, but it does pretty well for this style of watch and for this price of watch also. 
So that's pretty much it for the Bertucci A2T today. This isn't a type of watch that will wow you over a 10 minute YouTube video. I don't think that's not the point at all. This is a tool, this is a companion, this is something you slap on your wrist and it's there for you when you need it for years, if not decades. I'm sure that is what John is hoping. This will scratch. This is not treated titanium as far as I know. It is not coated in titanium. Always scratches more readily than stainless steel. I would love to see what this one looks like after a couple of years on John's wrist, but hey, it's got that recessed sapphire. It's got that thick nylon. I think this has got a lot going for it. It should last much, much longer than any of his previous Seikos. I'd put money on it. In fact, I'd put about 200 US dollars on it. If you like this style of no-nonsense field watch, may I suggest you click here or click here. Thanks for watching this one. I'll see you all again in a future video, I hope.